God of mercy, hold us in love. In peace, in peace, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace and salvation, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace between nations, for peace between peoples, God of mercy, hold us in love. For we who are gathered to worship and praise you, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who govern that justice might guide them, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor in service to others, God of mercy, hold us in love. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, precious God. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning that comes after the storm. Um, what a wonderful metaphor um, for what is happening all around us. Uh, this morning feels a little bit different because of the storm that has that we've been living through for quite some time. Not that the storm is by any means over, but um, there are tiny little signs of life, new life, that uh, that make us have hope. At least make me have hope. So welcome to this morning after the storm. I wanted to start out again this morning with the prayer that was written um, between the Episcopal Church and the Lutheran Church to be read throughout this season, um, actually throughout the season of Pentecost, and especially while we are continuing to be uh, sheltering in place, whether by choice or, or uh, by edict, um, and also then all of the uh, the stuff that's been going on with with. Um, the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd. So this is called a prayer for the power of the spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray Worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we are in the midst of the restoration of all creation, uh, both inside and outside, one hopes. I, um, I titled this, this devotion this morning, Revolution, because I was listening, first of all, I was listening to Hamilton yesterday and, uh, you know, all about the American Revolution in the 1770s. Um, and his part in that and how the people got to the point where they just couldn't um, couldn't turn away from revolution. It was inevitable. So they were either part of it or not. And I thought, well, there's another interesting metaphor. They're, they're just all around us if we want to look for them. Um, but yesterday was a, 
a revolutionary day uh, with the charging of the four police officers um, involved with George Lloyd. And um, I was wondering if, if we had not been in our homes, if we had not been, you know, stopped by the pandemic and, and just kind of frozen in time and had uh, just a situation where we are more reflective and more inward looking and had a great deal of time to do that would this revolution that's going on in the country that I hope is beginning in the country, um, would it have had a ground to take hold? And I don't think it would have. I mean, if this had happened in the midst of what our normal lives had been up until March, um, it would have been just another on the list. But I think the seed of, uh, of George Lloyd um, that has been planted in soil that is ready for some big changes. Um, and when I say revolution, I'm definitely not talking about any kind of violent uprising, although that is going to go along with it, I'm sure. But for us, for people of God, for people of conscience, the church, um, revolution is kind of who we are, you know, that we move from the old to the new uh, through the power of the Spirit and uh, faith in Jesus Christ. So, um, so what kind of revolutions are going on inside of you these days? What kinds of things are happening inside of you? Um, once again, I will invite you. I am planning to do a, a book study um, on a book called Waking Up White, which I'm, I'm doing for a book study that I'm doing with the Synod um, on, on racism. And um, I think people for the first time are getting ready to to learn more um, and to take a look at themselves and how we were brought up, which brought us to the place where we are. And in no way, shape or form is this a kind of a blaming process. Um, I think there's, it's just an accountability process. So, um, and I think it's not the, the nation that's making us accountable. I think it's God who is stirring the waters of accountability, not I, I don't by any means want you to hear that I think God is causing this, but that God is most certainly with us in the events of the day. And as we know, God always brings something new and something creative out of chaos, as we talked about yesterday. So um, I just, I, as, as always happens, when I'm looking for something to use for the morning, I already had this word revolution in my head. And I looked in some of my resources, and sure enough, here is a prayer or a, a piece on revolution. It takes us back to an encounter with Jesus, uh, which is always the best place to start your day. This is called Revolution. It's by Anthony DeMello. Repent and believe the good news is the theme of Jesus' sermons when he starts his public ministry. I travel with this promising young prophet as he announces the good news in towns and villages, and I sense the enthusiasm and hostility he generates by his words and his actions. I'm present when he preaches. I witness the reaction to his words and that his words seem to create in the hearts of those who hear them and in my own heart. When he has finished speaking, someone in the crowd asks, what repentance means, someone else, the meaning of good news. I listen to his answers. One day, I sit with Jesus all alone under a tree at noon or in the house of a friend at night. He invites me to condense the good news into three or four sentences. These sentences must carry news that puts an end to fear and brings rejoicing. News so astonishingly good that one is challenged to believe it. Then, still seated there with Jesus, I talk about the word repent, the revolution, the total change of heart and mind. I imagine Jesus lays his hands on me to bring about this transformation. Then I come away 
and I walk into the day that lies ahead, transformed in heart and mind, witnessing the difference this has made in my behavior and in my feelings. I see the difference when I pray or when I think of death or read a magazine or look up at the sky and the clouds and the trees. Welcome to the revolution, whether it be small and quiet and just inside the inner parts of your being, or whether it be something much greater in our neighborhoods, in our church, in our communities, we have a place in this revolution. And our place is there because Jesus called us to be the ones who bring the good news, who make fear disappear, who plant hope and the seeds of joy in despairing lives. We have that power to do that kind of thing. And just as I hear people talk about uh, at a funeral, I can't imagine going through the death of this loved one if I didn't have faith. I think at this point now we are talking about, I can't even imagine that the world might go through these kinds of pains without the presence of the church. So welcome to a new day, church. Welcome to a whole new beginning. And my prayer is that the world is about to turn and that their turning is to face God. Have a great, a great day. I hope you spend some time reflecting on this. Um, I'm certain that I will as I'm preparing to preach on Sunday. Um, and I just hope that you have some time of quiet. When the rain comes, sometimes I think it gives us permission to not do maybe what we had planned for the day. So take a break. Take a break from your long break and, uh, and think about what God might be calling us to do. I... Uh, I love you guys, and I miss you, and I'm seeing you in little drips and drabs as we pass in the night or in the day, uh, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. See you soon. I'll see you tomorrow, and uh, have a blessed day.